to the, uh, the old man and when we come up, we are resurrecting in the new life or we're rising in the new life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says the old things have passed away. Behold, I have become new in Christ Jesus. So when we come to Jesus Christ, we repent of our sin. So that means we have made a conscious decision. It's a, 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 a complete turn to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to no longer hold on to this old lifestyle, all these older ways of thinking, and I'm coming into the new. I'm coming into a new life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So that means I'm dead, and, and then uh, when, I'm, when I'm buried, hallelujah, I'm, I, I, I'm like, when I, when I lay there, you know, when it's like, when you know when you die in the coffin and you just lay there, it's the same way like water. So when we lay down there like this, and you know, we lay the water, we basically being washed, hallelujah, we die to our flesh, and we rise up and rise up in the newness in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. And this is so important to understand because why? Because if we are not dead as a people, then we are still allowing the old self to dominate us. But the Bible makes us to understand that we die daily, we be crucified with Christ. And if, if we are not crucified with Christ, then that means we're still living in the past. We're still living in our sinful fleshly nature. We're still living in the worldly concept. But you know, the Bible makes us to understand that, you know, I'm no longer am I me, but it's Christ that lives in me. So our minds must think of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Because when Jesus Christ came, he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So that means he came to legislate and to enforce his government on the earth. On the earth, hallelujah. And so we as believers, we must be able to think like the king. We can have a mindset that it does not pertain to the kingdom of God. And that is why we need the Holy Spirit because the Holy because the Holy Spirit searches the deeper things of God and knows the will of the Father that we can move and have our being in root in Christ Jesus. We need the Holy Ghost. You see, the reason why I believe the church is dead is because we haven't got the Holy Ghost. You see, the reason why a generation is dying is because they haven't got the Holy Ghost. When you look at Judges, it tells us that, you know, there's a generation that did not know the words and the things of, uh, you know, of the forefathers. Why? Because they have not received the Holy Spirit. I was even a time, you know, even David had to go back and, you know, get back the Ark of the Covenant. Why? Because the enemy has stolen the Ark of the Covenant. And, you know, sometimes we, we have allowed the enemy to beat the church too much. Sometimes we've allowed the enemy to slap us. We've allowed the enemy to beat us, you know. And we're just standing there. But the Bible says all power and authority has been given to what Christ Jesus. And because he has power and authority, that power has been given unto you. Why? Because he purchased, because he purchased you on the cross. So no longer are you a property of the world, but you're a property of Christ Jesus. And because you're a property of Christ Jesus, you have that in uh, that in uh, what do you call it now? That heritage. The heritage. So because you have the heritage, everything that Christ Jesus has, you have it. And that is why John tells us that greater things than this shall you want to. Because now he is going to the Father and he's giving you his Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And so when the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, my God, the Bible says Jesus Christ walked on the water. And Peter says, hey, wait a minute. I see it. And there's a ghost coming. Ah, but, and, 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 and they were, they were, they were not sure who was coming. Uh, and Jesus and Jesus began to walk and he was drawing closer and, and Peter says, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come and let me tell you something, something miraculous happened. A human being started walking on the sea. A human being started walking on the sea. And my, 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 you see something amazing happened. The Bible says, oh, there was a, there was a time there were sick people laying on the street. The Bible says the shadow of Peter was just healing the sick. Why? It's because he has the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. 
the most important person is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that is why I, I just want to speak about this person, the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. I remember when I was uh, baptized in Africa, I was baptized in the lagoon. <laughs> and you know, you know the, the sea, you know, it's like a leftover. And I'm telling you, we're about seven people getting baptized. And, and you know, and, and I, I feel like, I, I feel like, I feel like I was a new person. I feel like I was a new person. And you know the funniest thing is this. My, 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 my brother says these words. He says, I will never change. Because he looked at my life and he was thinking, he, he, he cannot see me changing. But I remember in 2000, and woman, I heard the voice of Jesus Christ for the very first time in my bedroom. I said, Daddy, 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 I heard Jesus speak to me. I, I ran to my dad and said, I need to give my life to Jesus. That was a turning, turning point. And you see, when the Holy Spirit comes, there's a turning. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, there's a turn. Hallelujah. And you know his voice. Yeah, and you know the do you know how God speaks? He speaks through messengers like me. He speaks through his, his audible voice. He speaks through prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. He speaks through angels. He speaks through prophecy, yes? He speaks through his word. I want to think of yes. Well, the most common thing is visions and dreams. Because some of us are so busy, caught up in so many things, he has to boom, slap us, <laughs> slap us to sleep. <laughs> and he has to speak to us. Oh, we can see uh, many, many times that, you know, even um, leaders had um, dreams, whereby even Joseph had to interpret the dream, you know, and, and God did um, amazing stuff in Joseph's life, brought him to a place of power. So do not undermine your dreams. Sometimes, I believe, sometimes we need to write our dreams down and, and you know, and the Holy Spirit really will speak to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit has been given to us that we will be able to live a holy and righteous life. The reason why, you know, the, uh, our life is the way it is because we have not really surrendered to the Holy Spirit. It says, greater things than this shall you do. What are those greater things? Because the Bible says, when Jesus Christ, when, when he rose from the grave, hallelujah, the Bible says he did greater mighty things that the Bible cannot even contain it. So that means he did, he did so many things in the resurrection life. In the resurrection life, hallelujah. And I believe, I believe as we pray and we spend time in God's presence, we begin to experience more of the resurrection life. Yes, we may be, uh, you know, our bodies may be dying in the inside, uh, you know, on the outside, but in the inside you're living. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is living in the inside of you. So even when you die, that is not it. The life after death. Glory be to God. And not only that, but the Bible says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So everything that we do today, we are preparing ourselves for eternity. Glory be to God. Is anybody prepared for eternity? Because the Holy Spirit is ready to use you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is ready to work in your life. The Holy Spirit is ready to use you. Only you that are going to wake up and say, wait a minute, there's more to this life than I have today. Uh, when I look at the Bible uh, from Genesis to Revelation, I see the Spirit of the Lord moving. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is not dead. I remember I was in this church some time ago, and they were telling me, and the man was complaining. He says, I thought they don't, they don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. Now why are you in church? Do you know churches do not believe in the Holy Spirit? And they still happy, clappy, happy, clappy. But you know the Holy Spirit is alive. Because He speaks, you feel the talk inside. You feel the prompting inside. If you don't feel the prompting of the Holy Ghost, you better go on your knees and say, Lord, I 
I want to express you like never before. Lord, wake me up. Lord, provide me. Lord, ignite me. Because some people, they cannot express the Holy Spirit. That's why the, 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 the Christian life, you just, uh, I just come to church. Oh, I just come to Hallelujah, Kumbaya. Hallelujah, Kumbaya. And then after that, they just walk out. They never express the Holy Ghost and power. I remember when I was young, I could see demons being casted out of people. I see people that, that were sick coming to church and getting healed. I see the blind see. I see the crippled walk. I remember some amazing time the pastor has not even laid hands on people. And my goodness, they are raising their crutches in the air. I see, my goodness, people coming to the presence of God. And so convicted of the presence of God because he's holy. When was the last time that we really experienced the tangible presence of God? When was the last time we really experienced the tangible presence of God? We need the Holy Ghost. We must yearn for him. We must long for him. Hallelujah. If we don't first after God, we're going to die spiritually. If we don't call on his name, he won't answer. He's a loving father. We got to call him. We, we, we got to desire him more. Because let me tell you something, church. When we desire God more, when we long for him more, we will see the goodness of our God like never before. He will surprise us. Hallelujah. Change your call. Hallelujah. We got to know who is serving. We got to know him. You see, we've been playing for the church far too long. Come to church as if it's like a social club. We don't even know why we're coming to church no more. I look around the UK today, I see churches dying all over. We're compromising the word of God because the Holy Spirit has left the church. And we need church like normal. But David said the enemy has come to the Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to go back and, and I'm going to go back and take the Ark of the Covenant. And I believe it's time we get back on our knees and pray to God that God will save this generation. Because let me tell you something. Some years ago, I remember those days when I used to be homosexual. I remember those days when I was broken inside. I remember those days when I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I remember those days, glory be to God. But since 2012, when Jesus Christ really came into my life, my life has never been the same again. When Jesus Christ came to me, hallelujah, I, it was his bright light came into the room, the footsteps of the Lord. I heard the Lord come into the room. Glory be to God. And that is why I look at some people today and I ask myself, do they really have a relationship with God? Because if you really got a relationship with God, you just want to long for him. You just want to love him, hallelujah. You just want to spend time with him, hallelujah. Because he gives good gifts to his children. And that's why the Holy Spirit wants to give you the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, hallelujah. The gift of knowledge, the discerning of spirit, hallelujah. Interpretation of thoughts, glory be to God. I remember some time ago we were praying, glory be to God. The Spirit of the Lord came upon a girl. She started speaking in Chinese. The Spirit of the Lord fell on another girl. She started speaking in Chinese as well. But something miraculous happened that I've never seen in my life before. They started speaking to one another and we stopped praying and we're like, wow, this was on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says in answer that there came a sound of the mighty rushing wind. It sound people as torn of fire. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says they could hear. They could hear them speak their language, but they've never learned that language before. This is what God can do. Our God is not dead, but our God is alive. Counting back the church, I came to tell somebody that God is a servant. He is alive, glory be to God. He's the same God that gave us uh, the resources, the money, uh, the payment to do the kitchen project. Uh, he that started a good thing with you, some solid bring it to complete. 
completion. I came to tell Carlton Baptist Church that God wants to set this church on fire. If only you will sit, if only you move in the place that God wants to do for you. Hallelujah. It's time to partner with God. It's time to hold it to God. It's time to run with God. Because when you look at the book of Acts, call it be the God. Even in persecution. Even in persecution, my God, they are moving in the devastation of the power of the Holy Ghost. That Paul and Silas, they are pounding, they are pounding the prison, but they praise God, even in the lowest state. Some people may be struggling today, some people may be at the lowest state, but Paul and Silas began to praise Jesus. They lifted up the name of Jesus, and they were sick. Red oil is faking, glory be to God. All the chains are loosed. Up. They were set free. Because when you praise God, His glory fill the place. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. We got to praise Him from the depths of our being. The Bible says in John chapter, John chapter 4, verse 23. It says, But I was coming now is when the true worshippers. We worship him in truth and the spirit. But God is searching for people to worship him in truth and the spirit. But you cannot worship God in truth and the spirit if you're not surrendered to the Holy Spirit. If you're not allowed the Holy Spirit to move inside of you. Oh, come and somebody. You gotta say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. It's time to be sold up for Jesus. Come on, somebody. All hope is not God. There is hope in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't look at your age. Don't look at who you are. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. I remember those days when I started evangelizing. I said, Lord, I don't know. I don't know the Bible. I only know some few scriptures. I know there's some few scriptures. But let me tell you something. Glory be to God. I started sharing my testimony. I started learning the word of God. Little by little, I see great and mighty things happening on the streets of Nottingham. Hey, even when the police come, they got a problem, but I kept on preaching. I kept on pushing. Oh, come on, somebody. I see the power of God move. That even a young boy, a crippled boy, that couldn't even walk. I see the legs come and we see power. The guys start to run and go to the car. I see a person that had cancer being healed. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. It's power in the name of Jesus. Hey. Amen. When you come the Holy Spirit, Amen. your Christian life is not, oh, some say, I'm not going to go to church. Oh, church is just boring. No, church is boring. Why? Because the fire of the Holy Ghost is not there. It's not there. Amen. When the Spirit of the Lord comes into a place, ah, it's like the light comes. Ah, it's like the joy that comes with it comes on. When the fire that you have you see what with um with um oh how would I explain it now? You know when you have a stove, right? You have a stove. <laughs> and sometimes you know accidentally you put your hands on the on the hot pan, you say, ow! <laughs> I don't do it like that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you scream. You see, you imagine. The same way like the Holy Spirit, he comes and Ignite your being as you know. It's like this. Uh, this, this, this. I, 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 don't, I don't know how you explain, but you, you can't be, you can't be, you can't be still, stiff. Oh. You see, in England, what I've seen is a lot of people are very conservative. You know, the very you like, I don't know how you call it, but very yes, good morning, and everything. Polite, uh -huh. yes, I'll put it out here, polite. But I've been in Africa, <laughs> and I've seen my mom, when they get the Holy Spirit, uh, there is a difference.
But England, what has happened? Because you are the ones that, you know, they, they send missionaries for this nation to Africa. But yet when the missionaries come back to this nation to deliver this word, no, oh, I, I don't know, I, I want this word. And you can see it all around us. The God is doing something new in his last days. He's raising up missionaries and preachers all over the place. And, and, the, and the beautiful thing of it is this. He's in it for all nations. All nations. And that is why Jesus Christ has given us the mandate ha, to preach the gospel to all nations. Hallelujah. That they will be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Ah. The Spirit of God. The Bible says when the Spirit of God came upon them, there were witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The gospel couldn't have just gone throughout, throughout the world without the Holy Spirit. The gospel needed the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, the gospel is just, it's useless. But when the Holy Spirit is back in the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, signs of wonders occur. And that is why today, coming back to church, I came to tell you we need the Holy Spirit like never before. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what we've experienced, but the Lord is ever doing a new thing. Glory be to God. And as we live this walk of faith, the Bible says, ah, uh, let's turn to Hebrews quickly, Hebrews chapter 11, I believe. Faith is a substance of things, hopefully evidence of things not seen. And it goes on to tell us, without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must first believe that he is and he is the water to them that didn't they seek him. Glory be to God. So you see in this, in our Christian walk, we need to have faith, we need to hold on to what we have received. Because if you do not know or do not understand what you have received, then you won't cherish it. And we have received Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior. He's bought us with a price. And do you understand this price that he paid on the cross? Because sometimes Christians, we live as see we didn't understand the, uh, the, the weight or the, yeah, the weight of the cross. Because when I saw Jesus Christ on the cross, I couldn't even look at him. In 2010, I was in church and I had a vision of Jesus Christ on the cross. I was like, Ooh. there was blood everywhere. I think some people need to see Jesus hanging on the cross again. And I think they'll probably wake up. I remember some time ago, I read the book of Revelation. Oh my goodness. My whole body was shaking. I was like, Woo! I said, like, well, I'm saying I'm not a Christian. Even some people, they don't want to even read the book of Revelation. But it's the most important book to read now. I know some pastors, they're even scared of reading the book of Revelation. But if you have the, if you have the Holy Ghost and power, you, this is your opportunity to rise to the occasion. You cannot be like the church of Lordship that that is hot or cold. If your heart don't go, then God will spit you out of his mouth. We gotta, be a, we gotta be a church on fire. The Bible says, I will build my church and the gates of his will not prevail. Hallelujah. Unless he builds a church, the watchman the watch in vain. Glory be to God. And Jesus Christ will build his church. And will we, will, will we allow the Holy Spirit to build us up? into the holy bride.
He's coming for Holy Bride. And we can only be holy by the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. We cannot be like the world. No, no, no. Because the Bible says the devil is the prince of the earth and he's controlled the systems of the world. And that is why you see the day how you see so much crime happen, so much evil happening, all kinds of things happening in today's society. Because this is the doing of the devil. And the Bible says what? He is moving to and fro like a lion. Where are you seeking who he wants to devour? Mm. And God has raised us for such a time as this that you be the light in darkness, glory be to God, that you will have more of the Holy Spirit if that even makes sense, that you will long for the Holy Spirit, that you will be empowered by the Holy Spirit, that you will be encouraged by the Holy Spirit, that you will be guided by the Holy Spirit, glory be to God, that you will walk in the wings of the living God and that you can shine in your community, glory be to God, bringing hope to the hopeless, glory be to God. God has placed so much effort treasures in the inside of you. Hallelujah. You're not just a person. Hallelujah. You are a spirit filled deep by the Holy Ghost. If that even makes sense. The Bible says in the in the garden of Eden God breathed into uh, uh, Adam and Eve and they were, became a living being. Living. Filled with the Spirit of God. Everybody has the Spirit of God. The Bible says we're translated from darkness into light. That means we, we no longer belong to the kingdom of the, the, the darkness, but we're coming towards the kingdom of light. There's two kingdoms. There's only two kingdoms. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of hell. When you're born again, what happens? You're born into a new life. The old one has gone away. They say, hey, I don't want this life no more. I want to belong to this kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I remember, when was it? Uh, 2000 and, oh, was it 2014? I remember I had a, I had a, I had a vision of heaven. And, 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 and when I had the vision of heaven, it was like I was flying, flying. It's like I was being lifted up, lifted up, lifted up. And, and, and Jesus Christ was on top of me like this. And I could see the hills and the mountains. And I could see the, and I could see the, I could see the rivers and the, and, and the, and the waters was crystal clear. And the castle that I saw was sparkling like glass, beautiful. And I was like, wow, is this the new city? When was the last time that you had a, a vision of heaven or a supernatural experience of God? Because one experience, you say, wait a minute, there's got to be more. I want to look for more experience. If there's one experience, you don't, you don't stop there. You want to go more. You want to go deeper. Because with God, there is so much more. You know the 24 elders, the four living creatures, you know when they cast down the crowns and they say, holy, holy, God Almighty, what's it is to come? Do you know that every single time that they say, God, who is holy, I want to say it again. God Almighty, who is holy, and who is to come. So that means every single time they see a new perspective of God Almighty, every time that they're bound, they're bound to God, they see the new thing about Him. They are of God. When you are in the presence of God, you are like, whoa. In my bedroom, every single time there's a new thing about God, I say, whoa. I say, I, I, don't, I don't know this one. Every single time. Oh, I came to tell church today, there's more to God. There's more to God. And when we, when, when we die to self and we put off our fleshly mindset and then we experience the new life in Christ Jesus, we will live like never before. He wants to live in us. Hallelujah. Let God be personal to you. You see, back in the days, I, you know, I hear of all kinds of stories like, you know, but I want to live it for myself. Let God be personal to you. Hallelujah. Because he's our Lord and personal Savior. He becomes personal to us, and then corporately, when we come together, we experience him. Hallelujah. It's so important.
that he becomes real to us. We must desire for the gift of the Spirit. We must desire to be strengthened by the Holy Ghost. We must pray always in the Spirit. You know, some people say that prayer, speaking in tongues, or praying in tongues, is just bubbles. Is that true? No. It's a heavenly language, personal to you. I remember when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, nobody laid hands on me. I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I dropped to the floor. All I felt is this bubbles in my, in my, in my belly and I started going Some people they lay hands on them and then they speak in the spirit. But let me tell you something that's supernatural. Our God is supernatural. When the Holy Spirit came, it was something that I'll never forget. When I believe we need it, Encounter the, the Holy Spirit again. Hallelujah. When you look at the book of Acts, even in the time of persecution, their faith was shaken. But they prayed together. And the Bible says they were encouraged that where they were, the doorposts were shaken as they prayed. That was the last time you prayed. Jesus, I need you. I long for you. I'm desperate for you. Ten kinds of prayers. Because the some kinds of prayers is not going to be no mountain. It's not going to change nothing. Even the Bible says, check this out. The disciples, right, they wanted to cast out um, they wanted to cast out a demon, right? And they couldn't do it. And Jesus Christ says, some of these things come by fasting and praying. So that means there are keys and secret to the things of God. That is why we're not getting results. The Bible says Elijah was a man just like us, but he was praying, he was praying, he was praying, and then one day he says, let there be no rain, and there was no rain. That is power. Hallelujah. And it's just like me and you. We cannot undermine who we are in Christ Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody today? I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm very alone here. Mm. Open yourself to God. Let the wind of the Lord blow for you. <coughs> Hallelujah. Focus your attention on Jesus. Let him sanctify you. Let him purify you. He says, be holy as I'm holy. He says, be holy as I'm holy. We can only be holy if we are washed by the word. We've been renewed by the word. We've allowed the Holy Spirit to work inside of us. You see, when you plant a seed into the ground, it goes into the ground, it dies, you close it up, and what happens? You put water on it, and later on it germinates. So this word comes like a seed, and this word comes inside you. Uh, 
And when the word is planted in you, it grows and it germinates. And then when it germinates, the question is, what will you do with the word that you have received? Because if this word is just inside of you and it's not doing anything, then it dies. Because the enemy is coming to take that word away from you. Why? Because it comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come to give life. And so when you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life and work with you, he gives you the life of God. He gives you the life of God, which is what? Eternal life. So the reason why we are not experience the life of God is what? Is it because we say, Holy Spirit, just stay there. Stay there. Stay there. In most places, especially most churches, they do everything. I say, Holy Spirit, just stay there. And let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. In 2010, I believe, I was, I was, uh, I was sleeping. And my sister came to visit me from London. I you know, usually I pray at 12 o'clock at midnight. And because, you know, I didn't want to make more noise. Because, you know, when I pray, I'm loud. <laughs> you don't love that. You don't love that. And so, I didn't want to. I didn't, didn't want to pray. I felt a hand lifting me from my bed to pray. There was such a presence in my room as a whoa. That's why when I begin to relate to the Holy Spirit now, it's different. Because I know he's a person. He, he walks in the room. He speaks. He has a will. I remember some time ago they were doing something in this I mean, in a particular church. And I was sitting down there. And I was like, no, these people have grieved the Holy Spirit. I can't feel it. Do you know what I did? I had to go out and just go to the toilet. I just had to go to the toilet and just like, you know, maybe the Holy Spirit is just gonna give me some, you know, so I can be more comfortable. I went to sit back in my chair and I could feel the Holy Spirit was crying within me. I said, whoa. And you see, and I just had to, I just had to warn the church. I said, you have grieved the Holy Spirit. And then, you know what they did? They took me out of church. <laughs> they took me out of church. That's it. 